Okay, well, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for logging in to our Applos webinar series, our advanced webinars. Um, you are uh, tuning in to How to Attract Monthly Donors, um, brought to you by Applos. And I noticed that <clears throat> uh, a couple of you just uh, just started typing in uh, to see if you missed anything, and here we go. So um, if you could just do me a favor, Chad, I see that you can um, have audio, so that's great. Um, if you could uh, just, it uh, looks like uh, you can see my screen and hear my voice. So just a couple of you, if you could just make sure that you can both see my screen um, and hear my voice. Great. Hi, Daryl. Hi, Chad. Um, good morning. <clears throat> awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm really thankful and, and grateful uh, for you taking time out of your busy schedules. I know many of you who work in nonprofits or our church leaders or work ministries are very busy. And so we're, we're super grateful that you take um, time out of your schedule to hang out with us and learn a little bit more about um, this particular topic, which I'm, I'm very passionate about. My name is Dan Kimball. I am a product specialist here at Applos. I have the honor and privilege of presenting each month a variety of fundraising topics um, to anyone who is interested in listening, um, you know, you don't have to be an Applos customer to check out our webinars. Um, and I also um, have the opportunity here at Applos to uh, work on our donor management product as well as uh, do some um, other things, um, presenting webinars and things like that. So, again, we are um, uh, grateful for you being here um, in this uh, in these summer months as we go. And so kind of one of the overall objectives of this series is just to introduce you uh, to a topic and, and do some learning. Um, it is interactive in nature. And so uh, we will provide a place for you to ask questions throughout. And I also want to um, uh, recognize and make sure that you know that um, we record all of our webinars. So this this uh, this webinar and the slides that I present will be available to you um, as long as you're registered. So um, e, um, we will send out typically about two days after the webinar, we'll send out an email, uh, let you know that um, the recording's available and here's where you can grab it as well as the slides. So um, I love to share all of this information. Um, and uh, if you find this information to be helpful and you want to share it with a um, some colleagues or boards or somebody else, please feel free to do that. Um, if you don't know Applos, just uh, again, know we are an accounting and donor management software uh, for, specifically built for nonprofits, churches, and ministries. Uh, we're just about 7,000 customers strong. Um, we're growing, uh, and we love, uh, we love what we do, and uh, we love to um, provide um, great software for our nonprofit partners. So um, if you don't know us, we'll, I want you to check us out. We also have awesome customer service. One of the great things about being Apple's customers, you have access to our support team, which is free. And uh, we have, um, you know, live phone support. We have email. We have chats. We have a support center. We even have um, th things like these um, uh, these webinars. So, um, th again, uh, uh, great that you could join us. So why don't we um, – um, why don't we kind of start off again? My name is Dan Kimball. I'm a product specialist. Don't need to go much more into that, but I'd like to just kind of do a, a real quick before we get started, uh, kind of get a sense of who you are. Um, and um, I like to always start off with um, with a couple polls just to kind of find out uh, who we're talking to. Um, so would like to just find out, first of all, if you are uh, currently using Applos um, So what I'm going to do here in just a minute or so, I'm going to close this poll and I'll have you see the results. So it looks like we have about uh, 50, about half of you, over half of you are using Applos, which is great. Um, no problem there. So why don't we give you just a couple more seconds. We'll close this down. Thank you for participating. Um, this is just kind of a fun thing we do. We're not going to use this information in any way, uh, shape, or form um, with that. So let's go ahead and close that and want you guys see what's going on out there yourselves. So um, – Oh, great. Welcome, Elizabeth. Brand new to Applos. Glad to have you. Super, uh, su super uh, excited to have you on board. All right. So let's go ahead and hide those out. Um, let's do another one. Do you currently offer reoccurring donations as an option for your donors? Um, so that's going to be the question. Uh, so I'd like to know, do you, are you currently offering uh, some kind of reoccurring or monthly donation program uh, to your donor base? And again, this could be online or um, through a direct mail uh, envelope type of, of uh, situation. 
pretty easy. Yes, no. Looks like more are yes than they are no, which is great. Um, why don't I go ahead and give you just a couple more seconds. We're going to close this and share it. So I've got about 64% of you who are currently using uh, some kind of reoccurring program, which is really awesome. Congratulations. Uh, and we're going to talk about some best practices here um, here in a second. And how about uh, this one right here? Why don't we ask, um, let's ask you this, what percentage of your donations are collected online? In other words, you might have an envelope system. Um, how many of you are collecting uh, your donations online? Let's get a sense there. This is, uh, this is always an interesting thing. The assumption is that everybody's online, but there's still a lot of folks that are not there yet, which is fine um, for various reasons. There's still some hesitation and, and not, um, not all really sure what the software can and can't do. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and share this for you. This is an interesting kind of a mixed bag here. So about 100%, um, 11, about 11%. Um, there we go. Good. Rarely. So a few, none at all, which is absolutely fine. We'll talk about that. Let's do one more. Uh, oops. Uh, yeah. So we'll do one more and then we'll get uh, get into it. So just out of curiosity, why did you sign up for this uh, this webinar today? I'm interested in increasing monthly donations. My boss made me. Interested in how, how software can help me. I just wanted to learn something new. Okay, very good. How about about five more seconds, and then we'll we'll dive into this, uh, into the content. Great, very good. Thank you all for participating. Those who did, let me share these results for you, so you all know who all is out there. So it looks like the more more majority of you are are really interested in maybe learning something new about monthly, uh, monthly giving and monthly donations. So hopefully, um, we can enlighten you on that. So once again, I just want to. Um, uh, uh, just want to let you know that we are recording this. Um, and um, also, if you have a question, just just type it in the box. What I'm going to do is I'll start going through the content. And then from time to time, I'll just take a pause. I'll look at questions. If I've missed anything, just hang in there. I'll get back to you. And at the very end, we'll do Q&A. So um, let's get going. So just by way of introduction, you might have already seen a little bit of this when you when you signed up. But, um, you know, we're going to be talking about monthly donor programs. Um, and they really are a low effort and high impact way to increase what we like to call your donor retention and your donor lifetime value. We're going to talk about that for a little bit. Um, it's a great way to, uh, you know, provide a predictable stream of income, more revenue. Um, it's really a great tool that that in every nonprofit and every church and ministry should have in their toolbox. However, I do want to say that building and maintaining a monthly donor program isn't as simple as just adding a button to your to your uh, website or um, or or making that an option on the on the tearaway form when you send a direct mail appeal. And that's really what I want to get into is kind of maybe help you think about some strategies, um, how to start a program if you don't have one, how to build upon one if you do have one. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, monthly donation ideas. In other words, we're going to look at some samples of other people. Um, and then um, we're going to maybe some tips for sustaining those monthly donors. So that's uh, that's what we're going to do or kind of get into that. Um, I think, think just by way of introduction, let's talk about what exactly is a monthly donation program. Uh, many uh, the, the term monthly and reoccurring, I'm going to interchange a lot. To me, it's the same thing. Um, so monthly giving programs is also known as reoccurring giving. Um, it really is. Some nonprofit experts would consider it kind of the holy grail of fundraising. Well, what do I mean by that? Imagine having a program in place where your donors send you a check every month or even better, allow you to charge a set amount directly from their credit cards each month. And it feels good doing so. In other words, you're not forcing people and begging people for those dollars. That's really what we're talking about here is um, that interaction between those donors where they're in a sense um, so committed to you, so committed to your mission that they're saying, go ahead, <laughs> charge my card every month. Here's my check each month. Um, and it's really a great feeling. And um, what we're going to actually show you is just kind of some proven results on why this is such a, a, a critical component and how it can really change the overall uh, uh, income stream uh, of your fundraising programs. 
Um, a solid monthly donation program has proven to not um, uh, help only your bottom line, but also your mission and program as well. As well, and what I mean by that is that um, you know by by having a more steady stream of income and um, more predictability in that income, you can build upon those programs. So, for example, when you're doing your budgets and you're starting to maybe grow programs, if you start to see a growth in those monthly programs, you can obviously grow those programs. I got a big red warning button here. Uh, warning is this is very um, – this is also um, – what we're going to be talking about is much more than just processing donations every month. And um, I really want to emphasize that this is an, a program, not just a thing or a task. <clears throat> Excuse my cough. I am kind of just getting over a, a little something. So if I get a little, a little frog in my throat, I apologize. Um, so I really want to kind of emphasize some of the planning uh, pieces that go into the program. So just kind of some stats that I find um, really interesting. If you've been on my webinars before, you know, I like to kind of, um, you know, find out what's out there. And, and, and I like statistics a lot. I like to hear what else is going on. Um, this one's really interesting to me is that is that 90 um, uh, 90 percent and up. Um, in other words, uh, when you have monthly donors, your retention rates are up. Retention means that every year when you get a donor, how many of those donors each year do you lose out of your database? In other words, you get a gift of fifty dollars or a hundred dollars one year. The next year, are they, are they there? And most nonprofits know that this is the big um, kind of magic um, wand that everybody wished that they could um, wave and keep those donors in your system. And we all know that that donors, they there's attrition. They move out. They move on for whatever reason. Some it's because um, the nonprofits aren't doing a good enough job keeping them engaged. Some people move. Some people pass away. Some people move on, whatever it might be. But the studies are showing that by having a monthly donor program, your retention rates are going to shoot way up from the 40% uh, to the 90%. Um, this that I find interesting is that 60% of donors under the age of 35 give monthly. So young people are interested in monthly programs and reoccurring donation programs. I really like that one. The average monthly gift is about $24 a month or $288 a year. Um, this is interesting because, you know, you don't have to be a big donor to give monthly. Um, and I think why people like it is that a small gift over time will really add up to a, to a bigger gift. This one I just saw, I just threw this in last night, which was 52% of millennials are interested in monthly giving programs. I think part of that is because of the whole online type of thing and, and their engagement online. So, you know, just some things to think about um, uh, with uh, with that. So, um, keep those in mind. So, you know, let's talk about these two donors and, and why this is really such a big deal. And most people that talk about fundraising, if you've been on other, um, you know, other uh, um, uh, webinars, such as like, uh, I know Bloomerang does absolutely excellent webinars. If you've ever checked them out, um, they all talk about these kind of concept, which is a monthly donor versus a regular donor. And well, people think, oh, you know, $500 gift, isn't that great? One big gift. Um, but really what we're talking about is how a smaller gift over time can not only surpass that one-time larger gift, but then you can actually see um, that the, lar the one-time larger gift isn't always sustainable, where monthly gifts are going to be sustainable. So you have this little graph here, um, and you see that a $50 average gift times 12 is $600 versus a $100 average gift three times a year, you know, something like that. Um, so you just kind of want to be keeping that uh, – two donors in mind. Not everybody's going to be into monthly gifts. So um, the idea isn't to make people feel bad about it. Some people just prefer a one time a gift. Uh, well, some people don't want to be bothered. But the point is, is that there's a lot of opportunity on the table here. If you um, um, if you're doing that, uh, let me my screen still shows. You know what? I am so sorry. Let me uh, let me see what's going on here with that. All right, everybody, how about that? I just kind of had a technical glitch here, and I just realized it. So let me go back and go to the questions. There it is. Uh, there you go, Metter. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, everybody. So uh, so just for, so you know what you missed, this is the stats I did right here. So uh, I apologize. I think the poll um, seemed to get stuck. So are you guys all good now there? Okay. Good. 
All right. So my apologies for that. Like I said, the the um, sometimes the software gets a little stuck here. Um, so that's the stats that I went over. Um, um, and um, and then uh, the screen that I was just talking about when you guys let me know um, what was going on. So, uh, again, my apologies, but you guys can can see that now. So um, here's here's kind of what where I was kind of leaving off on in terms of the, the slide. So we'll kind of move forward from there. So, um, again, the point being is that um, you can see a comparison between a one time donor versus a monthly donor and um, and some of the. Um, you know, the, the long-term effects. So what are the benefits of a, of a monthly giving program? Again, a lot of you are already doing that. So this is going to be somewhat, um, you know, not new information, but it's a good reminder. First of all, if there are more, it's proven that you're going to bring in more money to your nonprofit or your ministry. The average reoccurring donor will give 42% more in one year than those who give one-time gifts. This is the thing that really blows people away, especially when you're dealing with small donors versus big donors and all of that. Monthly donors also have a greater lifetime revenue per donor. We're gonna, I'm going to show you more specifically about that here in just a, a minute or so. Um, will you be addressing millennials again more specifically? I have some questions about that particular demographic at some point. Uh, Elizabeth, I'll talk a little bit about that, but that might be something. Um, I actually have a, a separate webinar on millennials and millennial giving habits that I can address uh, with you later on. But that's a great question about millennials. But I'll come back to that question. Um, also, higher retention rates. Again, we, we talk a lot about retention rate. Monthly donors do have a higher retention rate than other types of donors. New donor retention rates average less than 23%, meaning that when you get a new donor, um, you know, 23% tw uh, of those <coughs> hang in there for the next year or the year after that, where monthly giving programs typically are seeing much higher retention rates of repetitive and long-term giving habits, which is absolutely where you want to be. Um, so this is why it is such a, a big deal and an important topic. Um, Office, it's easy. Um, you know, when when monthly donor programs, um, they're re relatively simply, especially now with things like um, ACH, automatic checking withdrawals, credit cards, things like that. I know that there's always some, you know, bugs about that in terms of, you know, credit card expirations and fraud and things like that. But in general, when you can get people into a habit, and it and they don't feel it quite so much. It does make it pretty easy, and it's also more predictable. So meaning that fewer recurring donors cancel their donations. Therefore, when you are signing up um, people on monthly donations, uh, they're not only committed to your cause, but then you can predict um, more revenue for your nonprofit or ministry. So those are definitely going to be the benefits. I think those are going to be the the top benefits of the program. And I do say that they're relatively um, simple to set up. Um, they're not, you know, simple to manage, but they are simple to set up. So this would be something you want to think about on that. So, um, so let's talk, let's go back to this, this whole idea of donor retention. And, and I'm just going to kind of emphasize it for just a couple more minutes, and then we'll move on to some, some other samples. And, and the reason why um, this is such a big deal is that most nonprofits and, and churches and ministries struggle with this same idea, which is um, what we call the leaky bucket. The leaky bucket means that, you know, most most nonprofits, they bring people into their program, they become committed for some reason, they give, but then what tools do you have in place to keep those donors not only engaged in your nonprofit, um, but to the tools to ensure that they're going to give again? Um, and again, there's a whole, um, you know, variety of topics about why people don't give a second or a third time. Some, and again, there's um, those could be things like, you know, they don't get a thank you letter. Um, you know, they're getting the same thank you letter over and over. There's a lot of uh, a lot of content about that out there. But really what I want to highlight is right over here, if you look at, at the lifetime value of a, of a monthly donor, meaning um, if somebody was to be a monthly donor and they were stay to hang in there with you for five or six or seven years, look at the lifetime value. Most People that study this will agree that over time, if you're doing a good job communicating your message, that those monthly donations will usually raise a little bit. Um, so you start here with this donor who gives $10 a month uh, for a couple of years. And then for whatever reason, a certain appeal went out or a new program was started. Look, they gave 25 and then eventually 35 and then 50. And if you can add this up that a 10-year donor value can be as, as high as, as almost $3,000.
Now, t now, you know, do the math times that by two, three, four hundred donors, um, and you can really start to see some significant um, changes in your overall fundraising program. So I think this is a really, really important um, kind of correlation between the two of monthly donors um, along with lifetime value. Um, so just be thinking about what percentage of your donor base currently gives monthly um, and maybe set a goal. Something like if, if we could get 25 or 50 more people giving monthly, what that might do to your bottom line on your fundraising buckets. So, um, and again, it's why we, we really like to talk about that. Re donor retention is hard. There's some things that are just natural. Um, people move on. Uh, like I said, people, they move, they become um, you know, disinterested. I think churches do a better job because, you know, people are members of churches or they, they stay at the same church. Um, uh, but uh, the challenges are a little different, but the, the idea is typically the same. Uh, interesting enough, more, um, more nonprofits do monthly donor programs than churches that we that we have found in studying this topic. So um, for those of you who have who have and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because mo so many of you are already doing one. But if you are going to start <coughs> a monthly donation program or you want to kind of maybe put a little more juice in your current one, I want you to be thinking about a couple things. One, talk, let's think about the planning you really need to plan a monthly donor program, not just, uh, like I said, add a tab to your website or click a button here. Um, you really want to plan. Like, like I, I used the example, just like a floor plan um, for a remodel, you know, you want to um, sketch out what it's going to look like. Who's going to do the work? Well, do you have a case of, uh, for support? What programs can they give to? What um, What's the impact uh, of those dollars? Um, why should people give to you monthly? Just because you ask, just because there's a button. So those are things you kind of want to write out. Or if you have a small team, maybe you want to get that um, kind of out there around a table or on a whiteboard and talk about some of those things. Um, do monthly donors become part of a special group like a giving club or a circle or something like that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, do you have giving levels? Do you have donor benefits? So these are all things that are really important. Donor benefits are things like when you give to like a public radio station or a public TV station, you get a little T-shirt or a, a CD or something like that in return. So these are things that you want to talk about as a group, as a nonprofit um, ahead of time when you're planning out your monthly donation program. And I also want to emphasize, I think you should do this on a yearly basis, meaning each year stop and evaluate your monthly donation program. And, um, uh, and just constantly do that evaluation. Uh, the other thing you wanna kinda talk about is, is who to approach and what channel. Meaning that monthly donations is not just online. Are you doing this through mail? Are you doing this through email? Are you doing this on just through your website or your online donation pages? Maybe you do all three. But I really wanna, um, Emphasize that knowing your donor base, knowing who gives to what channels is really important. In other words, if you have a donor base that's older and you know that they are not as comfortable going online, then certainly continue on with the email or the mail um, uh, direct mail campaigns. In other words, don't don't go all one or nothing unless you have a younger base and you know there, that everybody or 95 percent of your donors are online, then go online. Um, but it's important as you're thinking about your uh, monthly no donation program that you know who your people are. And start with your most loyal donors and then build up from there. And in other words, if you've been around for a few years and you want to ramp up your monthly donation program, I might target 25 or 50 of your most loyal donors and ask them if they would consider moving to a monthly donation program or even 10 people for that matter. Um, so there's some thought ahead of time. Build and create an online donation page. Again, if you are somebody that has an older uh, donor base and uh, online is new to you, I would still go ahead and start one anyways. Um, this is a great way to start playing around with um, new ideas, new tools. I'm going to show you some samples in just a few minutes of some great ideas. Online donation pages, if you're using the right tool, are really flexible. You can change them fast. You can do multiple pages, which we're going to show you how to do that as well. Um, so um, I'd really encourage you, if you're new to the online ar arena, let us um, let us give you some thoughts about how to do that. But definitely start one going. Um, and then add a monthly donation option in all of your fundraising materials. 
whether it's a, um, you know, a, a regular appeal letter or your online donation page or your website, give people the option as much as possible. Okay, so that would be one way to do. Also, manage your program. You want to find out who monitors, processes, and follows up with donors. Um, don't just, you know, say, okay, great, we have monthly donors now, and then leave it. Um, just leave it at that. You want to be thinking about, um, you know, um, um, who's processing the guests. If you have new monthly donors, what are you doing for them? If you have somebody that's a two- or three-year monthly donor, are you tracking? Um, do you have process in place for knowing whose credit cards are going to expire soon? those kinds of things. Um, also, I really encourage you to keep those programs fresh and relevant, um, which means sharing impact stories and always thanking your donors. And I'm going to come back to this, but if you um, have ever been on a webinar with me or you've ever um, know, seen any of my articles that I, I write for Apple, she'll know that I am huge on this area of thank you. You cannot thank your donors enough. And I think one of the things that gets lost in online monthly donations is everybody gets those automatic emails but then that's it. Um, they kind of stop to forget that it's you still want to be sending out um, occasional thank you cards and follow ups and things like that and changing that content so people don't become bored with up. Oh, it's the same old thing. Um, and so the idea here is that um, you don't want that relationship with uh, donors to be transactional, but you want it to be trans transformational. You want to go from transactional to transformation. So meaning that you're giving them feedback on a regular basis of, um, of what's happening with those dollars um, that they're giving. One of the thoughts, and I really like, I saw this out there um, from another online <clears throat> provider, um, and they said that m maintaining a monthly donation program is 60% planning, 10% execution plus 40% program management equals success. So in other words, if you just stick that tab on your website and call it good, you're probably not going to have as much su success. The planning part is, again, the things that we talked about is who's going to monitor and process those gifts, who's doing the thank yous, who's changing the content, do you have new stories, are you telling good stories as part of those monthly donation programs. Um, so keep that in mind as you're, as you're, as you're looking and evaluating your own uh, monthly donation programs. Um, I would say customize pages as much as possible and talk about impact. Make it uh, relatable and make it shareable. What that means is that um, uh, you want to not only give people a place to say, yeah, I really understand that or I can really connect with that or that was a great story, but also give them an opportunity to share that. So if you have an opportunity or, um, or a link on your page where people can share it to an um, a Instagram account or share something uh, to on your website to a, a Facebook page or something like that, um, get, that's an interaction and engagement that you want to reach for in those monthly donation programs. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and so uh, with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the next um, about you know five or ten minutes, and I'm actually going to show you some examples um, that are out there of some on of some um, monthly donation programs that I think are effective. I'm going to stop before I do that. Um, I have a couple of questions here that popped in. Um, one is for um, if you already have online regular donors, is it better or more difficult to use multiple? three or four online services. Um, is it better or more difficult to use multiple three or four online services? I mean, Richard, I think that's a great question. I mean, I'm a big believer in trying to, um, uh, if, if those three or four services are for you on the processing side or are they for the donors? In other words, is there a different place that the donors have to go to give online versus to give monthly versus um, I mean, I, I'm a big believer in trying to make the user experience as easy as possible. Um, and if the donors have to work hard um, to make a monthly donation, they're going to tend to um, kind of not want to do it. So I would say try to look for um, online services where you can simplify and mainstream as much as possible. Please, Richard, let me know if I've, um, um, if I've, answered, if I've understood that question uh, correctly. Um, please talk about the pros and cons of accepting credit cards, debit cards. Uh, we have an issue with people going into debt to uh, make a church donation. Also, the cost of accepting cards is so steep. 
Um, Carly, that's an excellent question. Actually, in my uh, last month's webinar, which that's okay, you, we're a part of that. I talked about that because I did a church online uh, giving campaign uh, webinar. Here's my take on that. First of all, as a church, I think you should uh, stress um, and encourage in all of your information where you accept credit cards that you put in in very clear and understanding writing. Uh, that you encourage um, people to not um, go into debt to make a donation. So that's kind of a teaching thing. I think you can message that out. In other words, encourage them to use their debit card and not credit. Um, and um, just encourage it from um, not only from uh, on the online page itself, but also from the pulpit and from the, the communications that you send out to the church. So I think that's a teaching thing. Um, the other thing on that I'd like to um, emphasize is in regards to the um, – uh, the cost. Um, I'll give you an example for for Aplos. We use WePay as our credit card processing provider. We're one of a lot out there. Um, it's two percent for automatic checking and three percent for Visa, Mastercard. We're talking about a dollar um, or so to a um, dollar thirty and thirty cents per transaction. In the big picture of things, it's pretty inexpensive. Um, I, I I'm personally don't really buy that it's all that expensive anymore. The other thing I want to also mention is that a lot of um, online pages like the Applist online donation page will give the donors the option to pay that transaction fee. I am finding more and more donors are interested in doing that and actually don't mind. They understand that credit cards are the cost of doing business, just the same way as when you go and you buy a cup of Starbucks coffee and they charge you three dollars for a coffee that you know is two dollars. You're paying, you know, for the cup. You're paying for the, um, the, you know, the the service around that cup, um, and you pay it. So I, I just want to kind of um, encourage you, Carly, to to really work with your people on on um, kind of rethinking how they're approaching that. So feel free to reach out to me. I'll leave you some info at the end if you want some more data on that particular topic. But that's an excellent, excellent question. So with that, let's uh, let's get into some examples a little bit. Um, so what I did is I kind of went through, um, I spent a lot of time studying other people um, and what they're doing. And, um, and so I want to share some things with you. Um, hopefully you can uh, see some of this uh, on the screen. Um, this is an example, uh, the Tri-County Partners for, of, of Habitat for Humanity. I think they do a really nice job here, uh, particularly with what their monthly donors go to. Uh, I'm going to kind of highlight the middle section, which is how much will you give monthly. Um, <coughs> again, you know, they talk about it in the intro. And again, I want to emphasize on these examples. These are a lot of these are from websites, but you can convert these into direct mail pieces, meaning this could be easily sent in a letter format or in an email to your donors. These do not have to be online to communicate this. But what you can see is that they're giving people not only the option to give monthly, but they break it down even more. $15 per month is 50 cents per day. You know, um, $100 per month is less than the cost of a latte per day. I love that example. I know it's, some people feel like it's a little tired, but I think it's, you know, as American consumers, you know, it's a it's a great reminder, you know, of every day if we cut back on something, what we could give to, you know, back to, to mankind or something like that. So I like this a lot. Um, and then at the bottom, um, you know, they, they give you the option, do you want this monthly, weekly, quarterly, and all of that. So I think they've done a really nice job. Also, I want to emphasize they do a nice job of putting a nice picture here. So um, again, um, we're going to talk about where you find some of these tools. Um, but um, uh, th there's a good example there. Um, so I'm going to dive into this question. Um, okay, Cecilia, I'm going to go ahead and jump to this question now because it's a, a good one. The main uh, the main way we've lost monthly donors is when their credit cards expire. But we have a fiscal sponsor, so we are not seeing the credit cards info directly uh, to plan for this to warn them. Uh, it feels awkward to get them to re-sign up after their card has been canceled. Suggestion. Um, so uh, one suggestion you might do is um, – that is a really good question. Um, because, so what you're telling me is you can't, you don't have any access to this stuff. So one of the things you might want to do is in your thank you notes um, at the bottom of your thank you note, the same place that you put that, hey, we're a 501c3, this is tax deductible. You might from time to time, maybe quarterly, just send out a thank you note. And at the very bottom of that thank you note, just put some language in there and say, um, you know, just uh, – 
something you know i think that there's a uh sounds so kind of up upright or you know um in your face but you just might say hey fyi um you know uh, if your credit card is going to expire soon or be sure and, uh, and keep your records updated or, or, hey, we're updating our records. Is your info still correct? Something like that. So I think in the communication, um, you can do that. Um, how do you pre pre suggest presenting this through website, email, physical mailing? Are you talking about this particular page that I'm showing right now, Sharon? Is that what you're asking? Sharon, I'm going to ask you if that's – if you're asking that, then I would say um, that um, – yeah. So, I mean, I'm a big – my – you know, my, I'm going to say, yeah, go online if you can because they're so inexpensive. Direct mail is so more expensive. <laughs> but I think something like this could be email or online. My recommendation is go online, but I also want to be sensitive to those of you who are saying that you um, – um, uh, that, um, you, you know, you're not quite ready to go hundred percent online. Um, Amanda, I'll come to your question here in just one second. You guys are really got great questions today. I love it. Um, I like this one a lot. This is, uh, this group think forward. I don't know much about them other than I, I found it through another org. Um, but again, they, they break down, you know, what those monthly donations are going to do and they invite people to join. I like, that's what I like. It drew me from, um, a fun little graphic, $5 a day could provide a family, and Malawi um, with the training equipment to uh, fish for their food. It's that whole, you know, give a man a fish, teach a man how to fish. And they, it draws me down to what's going on here. And then it says, join us. And I like the language of that. And this isn't something that I think is would be very hard to create. People get a little overwhelmed of, of like, hey, I'm not a graphic artist or I don't, you know, I have the tools. But you'd be surprised the kinds of inexpensive tools that are out there to do online publishing. Let me stop right here and address Amanda's question. I think it's good. Sometimes I find myself having to focus more uh, uh more time uh, than I'd like to on putting out fires or having to be reactive rather than proactive when it comes to finances to my nonprofit. Any tips on how to streamline the thank you maintenance part without making it sound generic? It's a really good question, Amanda. I don't know how large your organization is, but one is I would say utilize staff, utilize volunteers, and utilize your board. One of the things that I've been doing myself as as I've worked with a lot of boards locally and I've served on boards, is I'm getting the boards much more involved in the thank you process. For example, it doesn't always have to be a generic thank you letter. Why don't you write thank you cards or thank you notes? For um, Spend the first 15 minutes of every board meeting, pass out thank you cards and a list of donors and have board members write uh, write a thank you card to a, to a donor or two, um, something like that. Have volunteers in, have other staff um, do that. So um, I would just say, um, you know, um, and I completely understand that, you know, thank you notes are one of 100 things on your list, but certainly you need to make them a priority. So that might be just uh, an idea around that. I like this one a lot. It's really clean. Again, like the last one, it breaks down, you know, kind of each month. So I think you're catching the, the, the trend here that um, what you're doing here is you're breaking these down um, by what that money is actually doing. And um, and really, I think this captures the essence of a good monthly donation program um, is what that, that money is actually doing, the impact it's making. Okay. I'm a huge fan, huge fan of, of CharityWater.com. If you don't know this organization, I would say Google them when you're – not now. Wait till you're done with the webinar. Um, and um, check these guys out. I think they do an absolutely amazing job, not only in their marketing, but but in terms of um, the way in which they communicate what they want donors to do and what I call the donor experience when you engage in their website. You know, I will probably in my lifetime never have the opportunity to go to the countries that they serve. But I feel like when I'm in their website and I and I um, and I'm a donor to them um, and I feel like I'm just a part of their story every single time they communicate to me, whether it's by email or their um, their online um, marketing. But I think they do an excellent job um, in um, in um, uh, communicating um, uh, their stuff. I like their pictures. I think using a positive picture, there's two sides to this. Some people say you want to use more of a desperate or a tragic picture. I think uh, uh, these guys do a great job because they show happy, successful 
programs taking place. So uh, I just like this a lot. So um, along with that, they do a really good job, good job with God job, good job with their thank yous. Um, you can see here your donation of twenty five dollars has been processed. A hundred percent of your money will fund clean water projects for people in need. Um, and this is great. And then what they do is they give additional links of where you can go. Like, for example, if you click this link right here, it's going to read all about this particular person or, you know, take you to different places. This is very website heavy, and I understand that, but I just wanted to show you an example of that. Um, I am going to – I'm going to do one more, and then I'll come to some questions. We're getting a lot of questions in here, um, which is actually awesome. Um, I like this. I found this one the other day. Uh, this is the Human Rights Campaign. Um, I think that um, – you know, not only does their their donation page default to monthly giving, but they've also included information about their partners program. So right up here on the left, there's additional information, but they go right to monthly donations. So it's kind of big. Uh, they they you see what they've done here is they've highlighted it to make it important. Um, and so I like and then this little click box uh, down here where it says make it monthly. Um, again, I don't you know you don't I don't know if you want to force people meaning that you should always give them the option. Somebody called me the other day at Applos and said, is there a way to make their donation reoccurring only? And I said, you probably can, but I would be really careful because you, at the same time, you don't want to take away from somebody who's just testing you out for the first time. In other words, some donors need to kind of um, kind of test you and, and it's a relationship, right? They're kind of dating you a little bit. Um, and they, you know, they want to give once to kind of, kind of fill it, fill it out a little bit before they're ready to, you know, take that next step in the, in the relationship for lack of a better word. <clears throat> so I like this a lot. And I think about, think about how you can, um, differentiate your monthly giving program from one-time donation. Um, so you make those monthly, monthly donors feel special. Um, so that's what I liked about that. Before I go to the next one, I'm going to go ahead and hit a couple more questions here um, uh, from Landon, who says, our nonprofit is not direct service provider, so we help to coordinate the service providers. So we can only say $5 provides this service, et cetera. Uh, do you have any examples of other orgs who have figured out good ways to market this kind of work? Um, yeah, Landon, I will follow up with you personally if that's okay. Um, I think I know what you're saying. In other words, you, what you're saying is that you can't say to your – Folks, hey, 100% of this is going to the work on the ground, and I think that's okay. I'm actually get a little frustrated um, with the pressure that nonprofits are under about, uh, in a sense, admitting that they have to um, spend money on, um, um, on. Uh, in other words, we can't spend any money on administration or pencils or pens or paper or something like that. And there is a lot of, um, there's some good articles and language out there on how to address that. So, Landon, with your permission, I'd like to follow up with you. Um, uh, and and give you some suggestions on that. Um, but I think it's OK to say that, you know, a certain dollar amount or a portion of your donation is going to go to the good work um, or be very honest to say, you know, um, you know, uh, your donation helps staff get on the ground and do the work it's doing. That's actually OK for me. Um, what would you just suggest for organizations that do not provide direct services? Um, I think same thing. I think go to your mission, go to your mission statement. And um, I, I don't know exactly, Haley, what kind of work you do. But I think um, if you don't do direct service, what kind of work do you do and try to find a story around that? I, I believe there's a story around every kind of nonprofit work that you do, but maybe I can understand that uh, better. Uh, you mentioned we pay for donations. We currently uh, direct uh, donors to PayPal, and then they often encounter problems with it, especially with monthly donations. Does we pay work better? Well, Sharon, that's a great question. I mean, uh, you know, here at Apples, and I'm going to talk about um, uh, the Apples online donation page at the end, uh, and I'll come back to that. But um, yeah, I do believe that the online donation page with WePay or with Apples is is a stronger tool. Um, and the fees are a little less, and it's more flexible as well as more customizable. So I am going to say that there are better options than WePay, um, and um, we can talk about those as well. 
Uh, how can 100% of the donation go to the charity, charitywater.org? Um, my understanding about that question is that they have a specific donor set um, that gives to administration um, an administrative uh, uh, part of their company. In other words, that the donations they, they grab online, um, they, they give directly to program services, and they seek and pursue big donors that just pay for their uh, overhead is my understanding. Uh, and I was at a <clears throat> conference last year where that question was asked. Um, yes, you do need money to run the organization. I think that's a really good question. Um, same question as Landon. Amanda, I'll, um, I'll add you to that, uh, to that list on that. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> in fact, you know what I'm going to do folks at the, when I send out a, um, I'll figure out a way to get everybody information about Landon's question. So with your permission, um, I'm going to move along. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, David for your email and I'll pass that information along to you as well. I do love the question about, yes, you do have to pay for overhead. And, um, if you are, are questioning an organization that says hundred percent of this goes to program and not administrative, Check them out, you know, call them and ask them. That's what I do. The Humane Society does a really good job uh, telling you a story and making you feel good. I like this. It doesn't take a cape to be a hero, just love. I particularly like the language in that campaign. Um, they do a really nice job here in terms of um, telling you a story and making you feel uh, more valuable right from the start. Um, they explain what donations are used for and why they're necessary. Uh, Humane Heroes helps justify that monthly gift. So, um, again, you can see this here on the slide. Um, they rely on the generous donations of our community to keep everyone happy, healthy, and fed. Um, if you're passionate about animals like we are, please consider donating to Texas Humane Heroes <coughs> through our secure donation form. So I just think they do a nice job here. And, again, nothing real fancy. They don't have a lot of photos, but it's pretty straightforward. But, again, they're emphasizing this monthly commitment and this monthly relationship, as well as giving you an honor and memorial option as well, which I think is a nice tool. Um, again, another Humane Society. I think Humane Society in general has done a really good job. Um, I think, you know, Americans particularly in general are very passionate about animals um, and caring for animals. Um, and so what I like here is that they put their donate monthly button right here, huge and orange. Um, so you kind of can't miss it. <laughs> so um, I, I like that. I, I'm not opposed to it. Again, the only, my only hesitation in all of these is I would just say be careful to make sure there's still a place for someone who doesn't want to give um, my, uh, on a monthly program. They want to give one time. Don't exclude them completely. Um, so this is a nice – and again, this is a great photo too. So they've done a nice job um, with that. Again, I I like the imagery and the overall look of this page. Um, it's huge. Make it monthly. <laughs> Join a team, No Kid Hungry, as a member of our Hunger Corps for a special group. Um, and again, they kind of, you know, you're a special group. You're, you know, you're unique and being part of this uh, kind of club or family in there. You're very welcome, Richard. Um, so I like that one as well. Um, Nicole asks, uh, my nonprofit is new. How do I solicit monthly donors? Will this work for me? Um, one of the, I mean, I, again, an email campaign, <coughs> Nicole, meaning that you may send an email and saying, <clears throat> uh, you know, hey, again, I don't know how new you are, but I think, um, or you might just select a small group of people um, and ask them if they would be willing to be sort of the first um, group of people who would be willing to take the nonprofit to that next level. Um, so I think um, personal contact, uh, personal appeal. I've worked with um, a local nonprofit uh, here in the community where Applos lives, um, and he was doing a banquet every year, um, and that was the kind of the bulk of his fundraising. And what I started um, encouraging him to do is every time he met with a donor that was interested, when he gives them a forum, he would say to them, hey, will you consider – do it monthly as well. It would really help us out. And he saw a huge increase in his in his monthly donation base because the relationship with him and the donor was something special. So if people trust you, Nicole, they're going to trust you enough to um, give you, give them permission to ask them for that monthly gift. Okay. I like this one a lot. This one's kind of wild, but um, one of the keys to convincing your supporters to make a monthly commitment is explaining why you need those gifts. Um, I just thought this one was just kind of the, the artwork was really kind of grabbed my attention. Some people find things it's a little busy, but again, it's telling you what those uh, monthly donations are doing. So you kind of get the gist here and <coughs> what and what's going on here. 
Um, this is a little busy, but this would make a really nice letter or email. Um, some people will think this is a little too long, but this is kind of joining the, what they call a supper club. Um, a supper club is, um, you know, something that the, the, uh, the Blue Ridge uh, Food Bank kind of created for those monthly donors. And it gives them benefits and, and um, you know, and then they really break down about what makes um, this monthly donation so special. And, and I like how they kind of explain that. So um, I'll kind of leave that up here again. You'll have access to these slides so you can go back and or you can Google some of these uh, organizations yourselves. Um, again, the look here is make a bigger impact. They really emphasize um, these online, I'm sorry, these uh, monthly giving options right here, again, by the colors and how they do that. And, the, and here they give the option. No, I'll stick to one time. Um, and that's okay as well. <coughs> so, Cecilia, um, there's some interactive going on here. And so, Nicole, this is for you. Um, so from Cecilia, Nicole, our first fundraiser was a start with sustainability monthly donor campaign began during our planning phase, almost a, a full year before our actual program began. It was very successful. So, yes, you can make it work. Cecilia, thank you very much for that uh, feedback for Nicole. I like what you said about WePay app, but I'm worried uh, uh, that I'd lose donors in trying to move them over to WePay from PayPal. So what you can do with that, Gary, um, is you can do both. Uh, and um, you can – and I'm going to actually show you an example of that in a minute where you can you can actually keep your Wee, PayPal donors on PayPal and start bringing new donors into, into WePay. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, will you be emailing a link to your slides? I will be giving you a copy of, these sli of the slide deck. So yes. Uh, when you get the recording of this webinar, you will also get the slides. Um, another one right here. Again, you're kind of getting the gist here. Again, I like that the, they're giving you options. They're giving you lower dollar options, all of that. Um, here's another one here. And then this will be the last one, this passport. I like this because it kind of passport seems kind of important. Um, and... Um, We'll kind of go from there. Yes, Greg, you can thank you for that. Uh, uh, Greg, you'll be getting copies of the slides, no problem. Oh, I said there was the last one. I threw in one more. <laughs> okay, so you'll get you'll see samples. Uh, you'll get all these slides, and so you can see the samples yourself. Um, one of the things I love about online, you know, searching for stuff online is that you know there's a lot there a lot of ideas you can kind of swap from other people or take from other people. Um, you know, and I, I learn a lot from other nonprofits and what they're doing. Um, so let's just kind of kind of bring this home a little bit, uh, get some practical stuff down for you. Uh, first of all, focus on a low initial ask if you um, are kind of struggling with what to do next with your monthly programs, meaning that, um, you know, make it affordable for everybody as well as don't leave out somebody that has, might have the ability to do a, a $100 or $200 a month gift. You want to treat donors like investors. That's that interactive. Help them know. You know, when they're making a donation, it's more than a donation. It's an investment. That's why we emphasize those slides. Everything that you saw in those last that last group of slides is one of these is one of these points. Talk about impact. What is that gift going to do? Who's being impacted? How many lives are being touched, uh, changed? How many uh, meals are being um, um, given? How many kids are eating? You know, so on and so forth. Uh, if you're a church or a ministry, you know, talk about the impact in your community that because people are given to your church and, and the lives that are being uh, uh, changed. Um, be transparent and accountable. Um, you want to build relationships and engage your donors. And I think you can do this online more than any other method, but you can also do it in email and you can also do it in a letter. So uh, I don't want to um, take away from the point that though the resources that I'm sharing, a lot of them are websites. Um, I want to say that you can do all of this in a letter just as well um, or just a photograph. For example, if you work with children um, like a tutoring program or something like that, what is more powerful than a picture of a kid being read to by a volunteer um, with a little thank you card saying that this child has, you know, uh, was read to 200 times this year because of you with a photo of that kid. And that doesn't cost a lot of money, you know, those kinds of things. I would say make it interactive whenever possible. What I mean by that, um, give um, give people the opportunity to um, to repost something or uh, to like uh, like your page or or um, talk about your nonprofit or ministry. Um, and again, I want to emphasize: don't forget to thank and thank and thank and thank. Um, I want to kind of kind of pause for a second and just say, 
What I mean by that more than anything is that with monthly donation programs, it's easy to automate it. But <clears throat> what you want to make sure you're doing is changing the, the, the message, changing the language, and changing the format so it's just – so from the donor's perspective, it doesn't feel like it was just being put out by some automated computer kind of system. So that – you know, change it up. Mix it up. Um, with monthly donors, some people say you need to thank them every month no matter what. Other people say – you know, you don't have to. I'm, I say meet you in the middle. You know your donors best. Um, at, at minimum, make sure that they're getting some kind of acknowledgement that that gift was received and processed. And then at some point, send them a thank you of some kind. Just one other thought on this, and, I, and I'll kind of move on from that. Um, there's a great article. I'm not going to um, – obviously, it's very lengthy, but I'm, I'm showing you the link here. But if you if you were to Google in uh, Pamela Grow. Um, and the article is uh, the dark side of monthly giving. That's all you have to Google is dark side of monthly giving, Pamela, Pamela Grow. Um, she makes a great point about the downsides of that. In other words, you want to be really careful. If you become too reliant on monthly donor programs and you're not maintaining them, um, you can lose donors as well. And what she does is she makes a big point that if you ignore them, they might leave. Um and she does it from um, from the look of a donor, not a professional fundraiser. Pamela Groh is a great thinker in the fundraising world. Um, and her point in the article is monthly giving is not magic. Without investing in the program, paying attention to stewardship, good communication, solid planning, and organiza organizational commitment, you won't get the results you want. So what all this does this mean and kind of as part of this webinar – Again, like I said, just because you have a place for someone to give monthly doesn't mean um, you know that it's done. You have to plan, you have to thank, you have to process gifts, you have to you know you know know who's giving at what level. If somebody goes from twenty five to seventy five uh, monthly, all of a sudden, what what happens? You know, do is, do they get an extra phone call? Do they get a special letter? You know, those kinds of things. So, take the time if you can to um, find this article and um, and read it. Um, let me just pause here real quick. I'm going to actually wait to the questions to the very end. Um, and um, I see there's a few more here. So um, just some actual tools real quick. I just want to emphasize, please. Uh, oops. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I want to make sure that part of the good um, good processing of monthly donor programs, again, whether you do it online, whether you do it email or whether you do it by um, uh, a direct mail appeals, is you want to make sure you have a good donor management system to track um, the back end. Uh, make sure that you're tracking donors when they're signing up um, and you're managing their contact wells. Um, contact information well so that they are in fact getting a thank you. You're thanking the right person. If it's a gift from a couple that they're, they're both being thanked, all those kinds of things. Um, things like, um, you know, programs need to stay convenient, um, but you also need to make sure that you have, you know, all the right tools in place to process credit cards, do EFTs and all those kinds of things. If donors are always having issues with credit card processing, they're going to get frustrated um, and, and most likely not want to be part of that program. So make sure you're using um, software that's reliable, um, whether or not that's Applos and, and I'll admit that we have not always had um, – we've had issues from time to time with some of our processors, and we're trying very hard to work on that. So, um, you know, keep, a, keep, keep each other accountable on that area. Use software that links online giving and donations. We do that actually. When somebody gives through WePay, that – Donation lands in the software as well as that donor information. It's very convenient. Again, you don't have to be an Apple's customer. Um, you don't want to use Apple's great, but it's, it is a tool for you. Um, and you want to make sure you have um, good thank you and follow up um, practices in place. Um, segment your data, meaning that um, you want to know who's giving at what level so that after a couple of years, maybe you want to ask monthly donors for a, a, a larger uh, amount uh, or to up. Um, and grow their giving with you and your organization. And again, just emphasize the power of reoccurring giving. Um, if you want more information about donation pages, um, Apples, we do have an, an online donation page builder. You actually don't have to use our software to use our online donation page. In other words, um, we have an online donation page builder that you can use um, free of charge. So you can reach out to me if you want more information about that, um, and it'll show you how you can set up reoccurring donations, multiple pages, and uh, things like that. Um, uh, and, and again, how to track what uh, donor information. 
Um, so I just kind of want to kind of bring things to a conclusion and then we'll uh, do some q and I'm getting close to the 11 o'clock um, or uh, 1 o'clock for some of you or even two. Um, and just kind of, again, uh, reoccurring uh, giving is an amazing fundraising technique for your nonprofit. Um, I think, again, you'll see that you'll retain donors. Uh, you'll be creating a community of supporters. Um, and I do think that you'll make the, uh, the life and the lives of your donors easier um, by using the right tools. So we just want to encourage you to, um, you know, if you're using uh, these uh, some of these tools already, great job. Keep going. Um, keep them fresh. Uh, keep changing them. Keep communicating and keep telling stories as you go. So with that, I want to kind of do some more question and answers because there's a lot of them. Um, <coughs> again, I apologize for the coughing throughout. Um, th uh, Greg, I did say, I, um, yeah, so you will get copies of the slides, everybody, as well as recording. Um, uh, one of the problems for Landon I've had is um, I can't track incoming communications with donors in Aplos, only outgoing. Uh, so I can't see the whole conversation within Aplos. Any recommendations on how to use third-party software to keep track of full conversations? Um, I don't want to get into too much Aplos work. One thing we do have in Aplos is if you do use our full donor management tool, we do have a report of contact um feature in that it is an added piece of our software landon i don't know if you are a full donor management user or not it might be worth uh, uh looking into that um for well so that would be my suggestion there uh, is there a new slide uh, hopefully that got taken care of uh gary in my experience being generous with donors was help with helpful um is in my experience being generous with donors with helpful resources is extremely important i agree um, and Gary, I need to show you, um, I can show you uh, personally um, how that, uh, how to utilize uh, both PayPal and WePay in the, um, in the same place. Uh, I love the donation pages. We have multiple ones and I love the integration with WePay. Good. Thank you, Julie, for, for that uh, shout out. Um, good. And I will follow up with you, Amanda. Um, I love the recurrent option as we can count on, um, certain money on certain days of the month. I totally agree. I think that is one of those predictabilities uh, in terms of doing your budgeting. If you're growing that that reoccurring donation program, you can really start to, to hone in on some of your budgets. Um, and then uh, last question, or uh, one more question. Do you recommend acknowledging the group of monthly donors as a group? Um, and if so, how to distinguish between the small and large donors? Um, I think that's kind of a case by case, uh, the Habitat heroes. I like those kind of like clubs and groups and things like that because it makes them feel like they belong to something. Um, and then what you might do is create a different level or a different sort of circle. Um, it doesn't have to be exclusive, but, um, you know, for the larger donors or you do an event um, and you recognize people, something like that. So I, I like that. Um, and um, I think it's a it's a it's a interesting way to to do that. Um, oh, if you list all monthly donors on materials, you know, I'm, I, yeah, that's, you know, I'm, honestly for me, I'm just, this is my own opinion. I'm just not a big believer anymore on donor walls and things like that. I mean, not walls. I think walls are good, but like those annual newsletters and, 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 and all of that. I, I think you can spend more time telling stories uh, than putting somebody's name because you're always going to get one wrong and somebody's going to get mad. And I don't think people are giving to get their name put on the newsletter. I think people are giving because they want to make a difference. So I'm just a big believer on, on utilizing that space to tell a story or, um, of what you're doing. So that's me, though. Uh, I, I would be interested to hear what some other uh, people say. So I want to be sensitive of everyone's time. Here is my contact information. It is just a little bit after 11. Um, I know some of you guys have to go. Um, but hopefully this was some information that was helpful to you. Um, maybe you picked up some new ideas. Um, I will send, I will be sending uh, a couple of you. I promise some follow-up. Um, again, you'll get a recording and, um, and a full, um, copy of the, the slides I shared. Um, you can contact me personally if you have any, any additional questions or you want to do some interaction. If you want more information about Aplos and our products or some of the use of our products, please contact me and, and we can arrange uh, a further conversation with that. So, um, really appreciate all of you, um, taking, uh, time uh, out of your busy schedules to join me. Uh, again, um, the feedback was great. The interaction was incredible, uh, today. Um, and stay tuned. You can check out our website for more upcoming webinars. I think next Thursday I'm doing another one on, on, um, 
uh, on boards and uh, what reports boards should uh, uh, financial information for boards. So if you're interested in that, check out our website. Um, so um, again, with that, I want to wish you all a great day and you'll be hearing back from me for those of you who I promised the email. And uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Have a great day.